The world is full of social media stars and celebrities that stick out from a crowd. The things that these people do in order to stick out from the crowd varies though. Some do funny stuff. Others do kind of dramatic type stuff. And then there are people who literally are just criminals as well. Don't believe me. Well, this is a video about influencers who are also criminals, bro. There's a lot of them, okay? Turns out in the research for this video, which probably won't get ads, so consider becoming a member, all right? You also get, like, uh, emojis, I think, in chat, and you get to join my Discord and post memes for the Don't Laugh series. I'm now realizing this probably isn't the best video topic to cover on my channel, but Alas, true crime is one of my favorite things. So here we go. We'll be starting with lighter criminals first, and then we'll be going into more dark stuff. So if you don't like dark stuff, then skip this video, okay? But the ones in the beginning are kind of funny. We'll start off with Sniper Wolf, all right? S.S. Sniper, Sniper Monkey. Wolf, you probably know her, all right? She's a reaction channel. She's YouTube's golden girl. Well, also, she has a dark, deep, stinky past full of shit and other skeletons. She's a creator that has been suggested to essentially every single functioning brain that uses YouTube. But she hasn't always been the perfect honey girl she is today. Known for her react videos, gaming content, and extensive cosplays that she did in the past, all right? And they look so good. Oh my god, look at that! Through this time, she's been no real stranger to controversy. She's been in a bunch of little stinky fits that every YouTuber goes through. Not really, actually, like, ghosting a kid with cancer, which I did make a video about. There is this girl, she's 10 years old, she's dying of cancer. Her dream and her wish is to meet SS Sniper Wolf. And I told Adam22 right out, Leah is a piece of shit. Good luck with that. Because I think it's really stupid, but... <laughs> Side note, I'm going to try hard to be respectful in this video. Hopefully I can provide some insight and light and make some of your guys' days better with some morbid curiosity in the form of a video. But who would guess that the princess gamer of YouTube would have a criminal past? A secret one. Just kidding, it's not secret at all. And I'm not trying to talk shit either, by the way. I'm just showing you guys the facts. What happened? She's actually had a, quite a few things. She got sued by a man for calling him a offender, which I didn't even I didn't even know you could do that. He's been stalking me for the past two years or so, maybe more, almost three years. I have him blocked on everything, but he still continues to watch my videos, stalk me, and make response videos talking shit about me. She made a video which then precipitated the lawsuit from the the guy she called a sex offender. By the way. Whoa! What is your felon boyfriend doing here, and why is he giving me that shit-eating grin? And it turns out he is a registered, registered sex, sex offender. offender. She admitted to copyright claiming him, and then called him a offender, which is probably not true. <laughs> she was also arrested in 2013 for armed robbery, guys, guys. assaulted a security guard, and resisted arrest, but it's almost kind of, you know, like character building, right? What? And again in 2016, she was arrested and charged with disorderly conduct, which is crazy because she was uh, very popular on YouTube at that point. And uh, she tweeted a photo of her mugshot then as well. I'm going to go ahead and re retweet that right now, actually. That's pretty funny. And she seems to be quite self-aware. I mean, she's obviously not an idiot. What's up, guys? I don't know how to start off this video. I'm just going to start it off. Today is the video that you guys all have been waiting for, the video where I talk about jail and what happened. I've kind of grown to respect her, to be honest with you. I still think her content is completely brain dead. And I'm not even sure she watched watches the videos that she's reacting to. I think she just reads the reactions and what she's supposed to say. I think she literally just reads a document every day. Um, I don't know though, I have no proof of that. Don't sue me! Hush Puppy. Hush Puppy is a Nigerian billionaire Gucci master. That's right, you heard me right. You heard me correctly. Very cool. Look at that, that's so fun. I like his shirt. Hush Puppy, AKA Ramon Abbas. I don't know if I'm saying that right or not. I'm probably not. Is or was a millionaire influencer who came upon their wealth mysteriously. And by that I mean they were caught and charged for fraudulently acquiring $100 million. That's the type of crime I would do too, by the way. And comment down below what kind of crime you guys would do, you think. It's hip to be square. You know, if you had to do a crime, what would you do? Hush Puppy was the classic Nigerian scammer, but just, he learned how to scale vertically, all right? He took a few business classes, 
He became huge. He hit the absolute jackpot of all scams. He even embraced his title of being a Nigerian scammer, which is a terrible stereotype for that country. Hush Puppy's Instagram showed a direct peek inside his lavish lifestyle, where he'd be swimming in all these crazy locations, eating at Salt Bay restaurant. And they're both boys. Crazy amounts of money. Flying a helicopter, throwing money around, wiping his ass with money. Rich people stuff, you know? Stuff that I'm gonna eventually do one day. And then it all came crashing down as it often does when he was caught as, as being the basically head of a group of scammers and their money laundering scheme was exposed, which was a domino effect which caused his whole scam organization to just... <laughs> Blew the top off his org. There's actually a video of them being found and arrested, which is pretty funny. I saw it the other day. Rest in peace, idiot man. Stupid idiot guy. But let's be real though. Hush Puppy didn't necessarily live, live up to the, the first part of his name when it came to flaunting his money. That is, Hush. <laughs> Julia Rose. Julia did something that I always imagined doing, and that is molesting the Hollywood sign. <laughs> no, I'm not even joking, dude. Julia Rose, a lover of Jake Paul, MTV star and Instagram modeling OnlyFans expert, was arrested for turning the Hollywood sign into Holly Boob. That's right. She flashed her tatas at the World Series, which is pretty cool in my opinion. She still actively has one of those shitty Los Angeles podcasts that just has no connection with the real world whatsoever. As far as I'm aware too, the, the repercussions have been quite, quite lack. Quite lax. All right, which is sad. I mean, look at this epic content. They tried to spell Holly Boo. A Hollywood sign read something different for a short time today. A group of people put a blue tarp over the W on the sign and changed the letter D. They let us cooperate. They kind of just made that experience, I'd say, as easy as it could have been. You know, nobody got tackled. They were very nice, so thank you guys as well. <laughs> this is my thoughts of that video. This is my thoughts of that whole video right there, guys. I don't like those people very much. But, you know, they're just doing their own thing. Vitaly, aka Vitalized TV. Now this guy, if I talk shit about him, he will he will beat me up if I see him in real life. He will literally beat me up. So I'm gonna be really nice, okay? Vitaly, which happens to be his legal name, is probably was best known for his IRL pranks and rich, lavish lifestyle, hanging out with the likes of Dan Bilzerian and Hush Puppy. I made that up. That's not true. I made it the fuck up. He's associated with the Paul brothers, the Nelk boys, everyone, FussyTube, you name it. He's like, like a, one of the OGs of YouTube, basically. He's been arrested a lot of times for pranks, almost as many times for real life threats, and sometimes for just beating the shit out of random people on the side of the road. His most well-known crime, his most viewed crime, I'd say, his highest, you know, impressions, best CTR of a crime, uh, was committed in April of 2020. He was high on mushrooms and he just beat the hell out of some poor random woman. It was hey, really bad, sad. She's got like an inch and a half laceration above the right eyebrow. It just looked really sad, man. He obviously has no idea what the f he's doing, which is no excuse. But Tally made a bunch of money online, gambling, he's got his own website. I've seen one video where he had a naked woman and a bunch of chocolate syrup or something, I forget exactly. As of now, he isn't officially off of YouTube, as he did make a return after that major epic moment, but he hasn't posted in like three months, so. And on top of that, he gets a fraction of the views he once did, which is deserved, I'm assuming, because he didn't necessarily adapt, he just attacked, all right? which isn't good. Being arrested for pranks is a lot funnier than being arrested for not pranks. Now, we're starting to get into the less funny area. This one, still kind of funny because it's a Minecraft YouTuber. There's so many of them that have done stuff like this. A p, 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 p word, you know? Why do they f what's a f what's the what's the deal with them? Jin Bob, a Minecraft YouTuber most well known for being involved with Sky Does Minecraft uh, and their whole group. Old Jin was having a bit of a boom in 2016 with loads of people subscribing to his channel and uh, watching his content, crafting his in his mind. I don't really don't know. For a short time, there was alleged reports of him being arrested, but there was no real foundation to those original reports until another article came out accusing him of having having a photo shoot with an underage fan, which, you know. And this time, instead of unfounded allegations, there was court documentation. So it's a lot more real. And now it is unclear that if he ever went to jail, I'm not exactly sure we couldn't really find the pertinent information, but really the, the point is not to research these cases too individually and too deeply. But I think the, the type of crimes that he, he's done carry a uh, jail time of 10 years minimum. So, but there's always, you know, it, you never really know. So Jinbop, if you're watching this, 
I hope you aren't watching it. Not in jail. I didn't mean that. Okay. Now they're really gonna start getting worse. So I'm gonna mind my T's and not try to be extremely disrespectful because there's real victims here, not just crazy allegations and people who are fortunate enough to have anonymity in these situations. Samantha Wolford. This person created a hit squad for her boyfriend. This was Samantha's Good last morning, video. Good morning, YouTubers. It's been a while, but my friend gave me a wonderful idea. And nine months later, she would end up on a body camera and not a vlog camera. Samantha Walford was a vlogging type of YouTuber who just wanted to share wisdom and random parts of her life with the rest of the world, which is what a lot of these vlog people do. I don't know why they think anyone cares, because it's very boring. Samantha had a husband, Ernie, a very hardworking fellow, and they, they both had five kids together. The story starts with Samantha being kidnapped and tied up and taken away from her home. There's confusing circumstances in the beginning of her calling her aunt instead of the police to come help her, which is a massive red flag. I don't know, like it doesn't make any sense. Obviously you might be in shock, whatever, but why wouldn't you just immediately go to the police is a mystery to a lot of people, especially in this case. Deeper analysis showed that the kids were all sleeping in this same room instead of all over the house like usual, because there's videos of the kids in the past sleeping just in random spots, like there's very unorganized, big tornado of children rode through the house and the kidnappers were in full black masks and black shirts and they wrecked the whole house, right? That's what the, her story was. She was questioned and claimed to not know the attackers, but then by some miracle stroke of luck, she came up with a name. Boom, Rebel John on Facebook, all right? She claimed that Ernie, her husband, was abusive to her and that Rebel John caught wind of it and wanted something done. And it turned out in the end of all this, she was not actually kidnapped. It was all just a big uh, play. She recruited three dudes to murder her husband for some unknown reason. And that was the end of her YouTube career to be honest, and the beginning of her career in prison. Everything came crashing down because there was direct text evidence of her instigating this and getting these people to do this. Planning was uncovered. The kidnappers' testimonies, everything went full circle and the finger eventually pointed back at Samantha and she's serving life in prison. Much deserved. I do not like you, Samantha. You are a bitch. Nassim Agdam, AKA the YouTuber headquarters shooter. You've definitely heard of this if you've been on the internet for any extended period of time. This one to me was extremely surprising and very, very, very unexpected. All these are unexpected, obviously, but this just seems from beginning to end so bizarre and nonsensical. Nassim was a YouTuber who made vegan cooking tutorials and workout videos with some extremely graphic anti-animal abuse skits thrown in, which were just so over the top and crazy. And you can see from her beginning on YouTube, her anger and paranoia in regard to the platform, just continuously building and building and building and building. Growing on YouTube is not in your hands. It all depends on who is controlling your channel. Which then resulted in it coming to a head in her trying to shoot up the YouTube headquarters, which is absolutely insane. This was also right around the time when a lot of people's channels were being demonetized right at the beginning of the adpocalypse. She thought it was some kind of crazy plan specifically put into place by YouTube to, to attack her just because of her beliefs and views. <sighs> Wild. Eventually, Nassim's insanity led her to drive from her home in San Diego to Mountain View, California, where the YouTube headquarters is, and uh, literally just shoot at the place. I mean, what is crazy? There's even police body cam footage of her. Shoot her head's right here. Before the shooting, hours before it, very strange. Hi, are you Nassim? Yeah. Hey, so you reported as missing. And before everything, yeah. she was marked as a missing person by her father who claimed she seemed very hateful and made it clear that she was on her way okay. to the YouTube headquarters. Fortunately, no one was seriously injured, except for her. She did injure people, by the way. Like I mentioned, the whole thing seems so nonsensical and, and insane. Whereas like some of the previous stories, you can, you can see where people are, are coming from. There's a logical path that is not a good path. It's not ethical, it's not moral, but it does make sense. This, something's not right you know, from the very beginning. And that's not to say there's something, something's not right with all these other motherfuckers either. I mean, I'm just, you know. <laughs> Mr. Anime. This one is one that fascinated me for a long time as well in my early time on YouTube when I first started watching a bunch of content like Mumkey and all these different people who talked about these lunatics. Well, hi everybody, it's Mr. Anime here. This dude's yeah, channel was called my Mr. My anime. anime. That was his name. His real name was Trey Eric Sessler. Mr. Anime was a, you guessed it, anime review channel based on skits and anime and shit like that. On top of that, Trey also had an unhealthy obsession with firearms and weapons from video games, which is kind of a bit of a red flag as well. Any obsession 
seems to be a bit of a red flag, especially when it's coupled with anime. Trey showed off and made his obsession fairly clear uh, in his Mr. Anime videos. I think they're uh, pretty decent, especially for the price. I have here a very classic 995. Mr. Anime would post his last video in March of 2012, where he was seemingly going to go through with a plan to shoot up a high school, and that being already as insane as it is, before he attempted to carry this plan out, he brutally murdered his entire family out of fear of disappointing them. His whole family, his the animals in his house, everything absolutely insane. He changed his mind and reality would hit him like a, a, a brick. He scribbled words on walls apologizing and showing obvious regret for the things that he did, which obviously far too late for that. He went to a friend's house, his family's bodies were found, and he received life in prison, thankfully. The final person in this video is someone you guys have probably heard of. He is the most notorious uh, influencer turned crazy for okay, no, unhinged no, no, criminal. No, 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 Go crazy. I'm going to refer to him as ER because just mentioning him on YouTube gets your video automatically nuked and removed off the platform uh, for good reason. Like, let's be fair. I don't want to contribute anything remotely positive to his image in any any sort of way, even if it's just from a purely documentary uh, perspective. That's ER was a complete and total psychopath. A beautiful environment is the darkest hell if you have to experience it all alone. Documenting some of his life on YouTube as a wannabe vlogger, he never quite got to where he wanted as a vlogger. Fortunately for all of us, he talked about his riches and his wealthy family and how girls just didn't like him for some reason. And my problem is girls. Which kind of makes sense in retrospect. And all of this in spite of his large familial wealth. You know, ER came from a very wealthy family. His father was the secondary director to the Hunger Games series. His entire motive for living was based on the idea and thought that you would live life like a movie. Go to college, get girls, party, drugs, be a rock star, be cool, everyone would love you, have lots of intercourse, <laughs> and go absolutely hog wild like GTA Vice City or something along those lines. I'm not totally sure. It did not end well. He went on a killing spree. Shortly before doing so, he posted a video on his YouTube channel where he claimed he wanted to slaughter people like animals, which is horrible. He did end up killing six people and wounded 14 in total, and he's been known on the internet since this time as the virgin killer. And this does not mean that he targeted only virgins. It means that he himself was a loser virgin. I don't like that story, personally. I don't like that one at all. That one makes me very uncomfortable. Fortunately, ER is no longer around and YouTube seems to be a much brighter place uh, since he had left. And I'm hoping that the future is continuously more bright for all of us. Anyways, this has been influencers who are also criminals. <laughs> if you're feeling a bit crazy, go see a therapist, talk to somebody, okay? Thank you guys so much. Love you all.